The reading today is from Hebrews 11, verses 8 to 16, and verses 32 to 12, verse 2. By faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance, and he set out, not knowing where he was going. By faith he stayed for a time in the land he had been promised, as in a foreign land, living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked forward to the city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, with Sarah's involvement, he received power of procreation, even though he was too old, because he considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one person, and this one as good as dead, descendants were born, as many as the stars of heaven, and as the in, immun, innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. All of these died in faith without having received the promises, but from a distance they saw and greeted them. They confessed that they were strangers and foreigners on the earth, for people who spoke in this way make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land that they had left behind, they would have had opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better homeland, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed, he has prepared a city for them. And what more should I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, and shut the mouths of lions, quenched the power of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, and were made strong out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received their dead by resurrection. Others were tortured, re refusing to accept release in order to obtain a better resurrection. Others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned to death. They were sawn in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, persecuted, and tormented of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains and in caves and in holes in the ground. Yet all these, though they were commanded for, commanded for their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better so that they would not, apart from us, be made perfect. The example of Jesus. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us. Looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. That's the readings for today.
Teresa Ann Moss de Grenier writes, You are surrounded by great and good companions, with witnesses who ran the fate race before you, now cheering you on, inspiring you with their courageous faith, with witnesses running beside you, churning up the dust of this well-traveled path, encouraging you with the steady beat of their beautiful feet. Run, beloved, run. Lay aside every weight, every worry, every excuse, every inner critic shouting against inspiration. Lay aside the sin that clings so closely, every self-serving motivation, every self-medicating choice, every weak thing you've trusted more than God. Lay them aside and run. Run, beloved, run. Run with perseverance the race, daring, enduring, alive. Looking not to the dust, but to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. Look not to the right or to the left. Look to Jesus. Focus. Follow. Jesus is the way opening the path, the truth clearing the clutter, the light blazing the trail. He runs, he endures for the sake of the joy of setting the joy before you and in you. Run. Run remembering joy is your strength. Remember and endure, for this race comes with a cross, a course of blood and tears, mocking and piercing. Take it up. Disregard its shame, that ancient enemy. Let it fall by the wayside, tired scraps on the breath of new life. Take it up and run. Sit down in the next life, not this one. Run, beloved, run, following and looking and remembering him who endured, so that you may not grow weary or lose heart, for your strongest step is yet to come. For we, the writer of Hebrews tells us, are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. All of chapter 11, I thought reading it all would be a little much today, but all of chapter 11 is the writer of Hebrews recounting and remembering the he heroes of Hebrew scripture, the heroes of Hebrew faith, from Abraham through Moses, Of course, our cloud is much bigger than that. We all have our own cloud of witnesses. We all have that cloud of people with, from whom we learn, some of them directly and some of them through story. And those clouds intersect with a bigger cloud of our communities, which intersects with a bigger cloud of our denomination, which intersects with a bigger cloud of the worldwide church. And I was debating this week, are those clouds subsets of each other? Like you go on cloud, sort of concentric circles? Or are they more like a Venn diagram? Because who doesn't like a good math metaphor in the middle of their sermon? <laughs> are they more like a Venn diagram where you've got the big crowd, cloud, the worldwide cloud, and then you've got circles, which intersect and some overlap and some don't, or are clouds of witnesses? Because we all have our own clouds, and they're part of other clouds, and they're part of other clouds. None of us gets to the place we are by ourselves. We all had teachers. Some of them are long gone. Some of them we only lear learn from in story. Do you remember when? Or let me tell you about this person. But they're part of our cloud. Some of them are the people who sat us on their knee when we were yay high and said, let me tell you a story. They just taught us the songs. Tell me the stories of Jesus I love to hear. Things I would ask him to tell me if he were here. They're the ones who told us the stories. Some of them are the people who, as we were teens, growing into adulthood, helped shape us, helped give us values, molded us, 
Some of them are our parents and grandparents, and some of them are those surrogate parents. I have often said one of the blessings of a faith community is that we have this cloud. We have these people who care about our children, who care about each other, and help together to raise the new generation. I wouldn't be who I was if I wasn't raised in a faith community. With Sometimes it felt like a lot of surrogate parents watching out for, sometimes correcting. That's where it felt like a lot. But we all have this cloud of people who care about us and help us to grow. And some of them, as I say, are long gone. Some of them are still here. Some of them are older than us, sometimes by several decades, but some are younger than us because we as adults know that children have much to teach us. Sometimes we listen well and, well, with any time we're being taught, sometimes we listen well and sometimes we don't. But we are blessed by this cloud. Nobody comes to faith alone. Nobody grows in faith alone. From Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Moses, David, Solomon, through to Isaiah and Amos, Malachi, through to Jesus and Peter and James and John and Paul, through to the ancient saints, to the saints of the Reformation of Luther and Calvin, through to the people who founded the United Church, to the people whose pictures are on the wall of fame, rogues gallery, depending on the day, at the back, to the people who sit in these pews, to the people we remember once we're here, they are all part of our clouds. When I created our cloud, and I realized at least I had to put at least one name on before I put it out because you always need to seed it a little bit. The name I put, chose to put on was the person who taught me Sunday school when I was in grade four. She was the head of the junior department in St. Albert United Church from the time I was in grade four until the time I was in university and well past, till the time I, after I was ordained. That's a long time. And Jane taught me, A, that Sunday school curriculum is a good thing, but sometimes you need to look at it and say, well, that's not going to work. What are we going to do instead? But she modeled leadership. She modeled faith. She modeled love. one of the people in my cloud. As I say, we all have, some of you have added to the cloud, we're going to leave it out for the, for at least most of November. Advent's coming, so we're going, to, I haven't decided how long we're going to leave it out, but we're going to leave it out for a while so people can add to the cloud. And then Advent co will come and we'll have our memory tree, which is another way of remembering our cloud, specifically remembering the members of our cloud who aren't with us anymore. But we all have the cloud. We all have those special people who taught us something, who led us, who maybe challenged us. And often they were imperfect saints. All of those members of the clouds were imperfect saints. From Abraham to Isaac to Joseph to Moses to David to Peter and Paul to Luther and Calvin. And on and on. But they still taught us. They still read the faith. They still pass it on to us to help us grow. So I'm wondering, we do have a microphone out, if anybody is brave enough, bold enough, or which, uh, excited enough 
joyful enough to share somebody who's part of their cloud and maybe why they are. Uh, that's, that mic's probably muted, Brenda. It's number two. So is there anybody who wanted to share someone who's part of their cloud of witnesses that helped them grow in faith? It's always a risk doing this in the United Church congregation because the United Churches are not known for being come up and speak in church people. Get closer. Get closer. I benefited from this church and I grew in this church, but mostly this church benefited my children. There was choir, there was Sunday school. There was piano uh, teachers, there was CGIT, there was explorers, there was after um, the service running around in the basement, there was fellowship. This church raised and molded my children and I am very thankful for that and they also helped me grow in my faith. I'm going to... Uh draw on that a little bit and uh, CGIT and Brenda um, but also um, I was lucky enough to not only have all four uh, of my grandparents but also uh, three of my great grandmothers and, but, and two of my great grandfathers I didn't know but they knew me because they passed away before I was two Um, part of my cloud is Martha Dawson, and I notice she's not here today, but I hope you're listening, Martha. Um, Martha has mentored me for the last 15 years um, on the Ministry and Personnel Committee. Um, she has always had my back. She gently corrects me when I'm off on, an, on uh, another road, but um, she's definitely part of my cloud. Margaret Bowes is really part of my cloud. I met Margaret, hmm, I can't remember, when I was probably 15 or 16, right here at this church. Um, she's given me all kinds of inspiration. Um, when I was about seven, 16, there was no Sunday school so for, for older kids, so I got to be a Sunday school teacher and she was there guiding me the whole way. And I stayed at the church till I was going to get married. She told me to come to her house for a Sunday school meeting. But guess what it was? <laughs> Some of you will remember. It was a shower. And I, I'll never forget it. It was awesome. My cloud, for sure, has been Leslie Ann McCloskey, Barb Van Hinkle, and now Allison Light. Those people that share the beautiful music, Lori, no organ. To me, uh, a cloud is full of music, praise, praising Christ, and helping us in our faith journey to feel the spirit. I would add to all of those people that have been mentioned already, um, the life and richness of this congregation certainly embraced us when we moved here. As a youth and growing up in Calgary, I was lucky enough to be part of a very active church and youth group. So again, all those people were 
very instrumental in guiding and molding the journey I was on. But the one I have to mention is our grandson, Ethan. He is my saint now. And every time I look at him, I see God's love, I see perseverance, I see discipline, and I see hope. So he is a living reminder to me of all we have and all we've been given, always. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us. Life is sometimes hard. Faith is sometimes confusing. Answers are sometimes unclear. But we are not alone. We are surrounded by a cloud of witnesses, living and dead, who help give us the perseverance to keep running the race that is before us, looking to Jesus, who loves us, who calls us to follow, and sets the course. Thanks be to God for the cloud. Amen.